you know, with all the high tech wearables and fitness trackers and glucose yeah. monitoring, do you use some of these tactics to work with some of the athletes you're working, working with now? Well, mostly for dietetics, we would use, uh, thing, you know, things like nutrition trackers and you've seen apps on phones and, and, uh, we had an app, we had an app called note meal. That is, is a very good app, um, that, we could communicate with athletes through and um uh, we like that a lot uh but we also we also use body composition assessment tools and the the technology is moving forward in the body composition assessment market with uh, potentially like uh full body scanners and and the faster they can go with the lowest amount of x-ray or radiation i mean it's not deadly or anything but the the lower amount of radiation, but, uh, stand up scanners and, and it, it's getting, it's, I don't want to say it's getting crazy, but it's getting like sci-fi ish. You're right. Right. Like yeah. those things you see in the airport where you put your hands up, you, there's potential, there's potential for things like that that could scan your whole body and put in a, you know, a, a, a digital avatar into your system and, and actually scan you for, for uh, body composition or bone density or whatever. And so I think those things are coming. Um, there are, uh, people are, are looking into, they call them tattoos, which are like Band-Aid type things that you stick on that can, that can, that are wearables, but are disposable. So it uses micro needles that can, that can, we're, we're not there yet, but it's, it's coming that, that can actually do, um, different monitoring of of some cer certain you know subcutaneous values uh whether it's sweat or whatever and i mean there's just a lot of interesting stuff out there we we're not we, so the difference with with where it is and where it's going is for most most of us especially especially dealing with athletes that are high caliber athletes it's, we don't want to experiment with them right like we want to test and analyze and give feedback so they can make adjustments but it's never a hey we're going to test this new product on you uh, right. because they, they're just too valuable really to do that and we use uh, our strength coach and physiology people use force plays to look at peak power and jumps and you can assess a lot from the force force plays we use force decks and and we we could we could see a lot from that as far as fatigability and and uh, neuromuscular fatigue or skeletal fatigue and that in combination and this is the team approach but in combination with the strength coach when he comes to me and goes hey they're they're fatigued he adjusts the workout but we also adjust the nutrition like hey maybe you do want to eat a little bit more before this next workout because your jumps are saying you're a little bit fatigued, that kind of thing. So it's nutrition is, is yes, it's a standalone, but I definitely think it's better when it's a, a combo with strength, physiology, even psych, if we're dealing with sleep issues and things like that. And I'll put a plug in for sleep. Like sleep is the most underutilized recovery tool that athletes have. Uh, but that's definitely uh, uh you know, everybody's trying, a lot of people are tracking sleep now and a lot of people are tracking different things. So, so it's, it's pretty interesting. And, uh, obviously I think nutrition is the most important of all the tools, but, uh, but strength coaches would say the weight room is most important too. So, so we all, we all have our own, but I definitely think the team, the, the multidisciplinary approach is much more valuable to high caliber athletes than just dialing in on one thing.